Welcome again to another edition of When School's Not Working. I'm Matt Barnes, and I run an organization called The Education Game. We work to help families reimagine what learning can be. Uh, but most importantly, I work with parents to help them learn how to buck the system, how to create new opportunities for their kids. And, and actually, Kath uh, Fraze, who we're going to be talking to today, um, is just the type of person that I would want to connect parents to. So Kath, can you give us a quick introduction? And then we're going to jump in because in, be you're on seat today. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, hi, Michael. Welcome. Hey. <laughs> Sorry, oh. I've been gone for a little bit. I know. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. We just started and uh, Matt just introduced himself and um, he he threw the mic to me. So I'm Catherine Fraze, founder of Workspace Education um, and also of 100 Roads, which is a research and development company. And we're innovating out in, in the world, trying to create um, sort of low cost alternative um, options um, in the metaverse for education um, that, um, that, you know, are actually really pretty exciting. And I'm excited to be able to talk about that tonight. But before we get started, I'd like to introduce Michael or pass the mic to Michael. Okay. Well, thank you. I'm Michael Strong, founder of what was Expanse Online, but is now the Socratic Experience. So um, Alex will have to replace the e-logo with the Socratic Experience <laughs> logo. And um, yeah, delighted to be back after some travels. Good to see you both. You so uh, yeah, let's grill calf. Awesome. Oh, I've been waiting for this. <laughs> yes, we have been too. Yeah. Very good. So where would you like to start? So uh, can I start, Mike? Go for it. Go for so, it. Kath, so I would want to start by getting a sense of like how you got to this moment, right? We've gone through COVID, but you had a life before COVID. You have a, a new and more, I think, more interesting life now after or during. Tell us, tell us how you got to where you are. Yeah, so I went to school like everyone else, but I didn't like high school because I felt I was really, really stuck. So <laughs> that's right. I didn't feel connected to the, to the people I was around, the community that I was actually just get, uh, doing my education in. Um, I did a lot of traveling, um, lived, lived in, in Germany, in, um, in Japan and um, in different countries and explored. Um, decided to go into education as a profession to go and try and reform it. But um, after a couple of years trying to do that, um, realized that the system was just so stuck um, and that I was really... Uh, what I really wanted was uh, to help people, I guess, uh, go further down their self-transformational journey or get to know themselves uh, better and, you know, understand the patterns that are keeping them stuck. And why is our school system stuck? That, that whole question of, of why do we get stuck <laughs> has become really my life's mission. So uh, I've done a lot of different things to really explore that. And um, I had a professor at university who... Um, it was, uh, well, help me help draw that out. And we had that, we've had that same conversation for like 25, 30 years. Um, and it's always uh, led me back into education and different thinkers uh, and very, very much uh, Montessori rich <laughs> um, as well, because she's really about creating environments uh, to help uh, children develop. And um, that is what I've been really interested in doing um, since my, I guess, my immersion in Montessori, uh, you know, how do we create environments where humans thrive? Um, I did that in person at Workspace Education, which was like a giant maker space for authentic creative self-expression. Um, and during COVID, we've, we struggled a little to keep the building going with uh, what was obviously with the pandemic. And I used that opportunity to try and recreate exactly what was happening on the ground in a, um, in a virtual environment. Um, and as I've been doing that, I've been discovering more and more about what is possible. Sorry, Matt. I just want to pause you a little bit because I want to make sure that people understand more about all of what workspace, you know, uh, the, the offline uh, version involved. You mentioned it as a makerspace, but can you elaborate on that a little bit before we get into where, where you're doing, what you're doing now? Yes. Um, so I had a 12 year old when I started um, workspace education and he had a little bit of anxiety and I put him back in school because I thought, well, he needs more kids and, you know, he likes being online and I wanted to get him, you know, off computer games um, and I put him back in school and he really 
uh, started going backwards. Before that, we were homeschooling. And when he was going back to school, he started working for the teachers, not for himself. Um, mm -hmm. And he would have a lot of anxiety. Um, he had a lot of anxiety in school. And he would, you know, call me from the basement of the school, begging me to just park the car not too far away. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, you know, I can't, this is not a great spot for him. You know, I don't want to be parked down the road. So what kind of environment would you have to create so he could go into a space and create his best life? Um, test his anxiety and get over what was what was uh, manifesting. I you know I think it's pretty common for young adolescents to manifest anxiety, um, and that is compounded by test anxiety and all sorts of things that are going on during that time with their bodies, their hormones, mm -hmm. um, and you know I basically I I found this building and I filled it with all different ways that that humans express themselves. So that's artist studios. We had a science lab. Uh, we had a movement studio, a maker space, sort of makery like soldering and computer lab. We had a wood shop. We did cardboard manufacturing. We had a big performing arts center. Um, you know, it's sort of not a super expensive one. We're <laughs> fairly low tech, but enough to get, you know, these kids experimenting with all sorts of different things so they could really discover what resonated with them as far as what they wanted to do and what they wanted to upskill themselves in. And then right in the center, we had an industrial kitchen and we had a big hub where everyone would meet. And it was like Grand Central Station. So I was trying to, <laughs> I was trying I to create- a... I can't imagine learning like that. Yeah, well, you know, um, the average family, we had about 80 families and about 140 different classes and courses and learning experiences on our schedule before um, we shut down with the pandemic. Um, and most families, well, some would come every day, but most families, um, wanted to be in our space about two to three days a week. Um, it was super social. They were doing social learning um, as well as, you know, learning and studying and, um, you know, doing their online learning there. But they were around other people. So it was more like the Starbucks feel, <laughs> I suppose. But I, I do think as humans, we need some time where we're really concentrating and at home and, and doing work. Um, and then we also need to get out of the house and do different things in person as well. Um, but what I, what I discovered is we just don't really need to be doing them in a big building and going to the same place. You know, I think the world is our oyster and we need to be doing rich in-person activities like um, what Michael does with Socratic discussion and, you know, maybe go to a, you know, an artist studio or, or go and find those things and explore and find those things that really light you up. And, you know, have, um, spend the money on those rich in-person activities and do all the boring stuff that you might not enjoy so much. Like, you know, if you have to do Algebra 1 and you don't really like it, why not do it online and just get through that? <laughs> you know what I mean? You can be more yeah. flexible. It's so much cheaper doing it online. And you can do it anytime, right? You can do it in your pajamas. So you have a much more freedom. <laughs> um, and I love I, doing things in my pajamas, by the way. Well, it's just so nice to have that freedom. And then the beautiful thing about homeschooling I found from doing it for 15 years with my two children is that we just became so close. And I, you know, I knew exactly what, you know, what they needed. And I felt very empowered. Um, and, you know, sometimes, they, you know, they didn't need me at all. And it was another parent in, in the space that was, was, you know, the person that they needed to get them to the next little step in their lily pad, in their little life journey. Yeah. Um, so it's nice, it's nice to have these spaces where you meet and you, you have a melting pot of different ideas and different kids. Um, so that's what we're trying, I'm trying to create virtually right now in, in the sky. Got it. Michael, Not, you... I've created it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Michael, did you have a question? Um, well, when we're ready to, I'm very, very eager. Uh, I celebrate workspace. It was a beautiful achievement. Um, you know, I'm still partly grieving that you, know, you had to shut it, or even if it's transferred, it's not the same thing. Um, but I'm eager to dive into the new project. So uh, are good. we ready to start diving into the new project? Sure, sure. Um, Tell us about it, Kath. Well, you know, I tried in, in between. So after, after a workspace closed, I tried doing it in, a, in an online version, but not, it wasn't a in in-person live video chat platform. And I, I, I just wasn't satisfied with the connectivity 
even in, in the more modern, um, you know, platforms like Muddy Networks that we were using um, for that purpose. So I wanted to um, try something for full families. So we'd have uh, children from, let's say, about 5 to 18 with families. I wanted to create a landscape for them. However, all of the technology that's now available and readily available and inexpensive um, and it's available for anyone to create. So just put that in the back of your mind. Um, they, they, you have to be 13 and up to be on those platforms right now. Right. Right. So rather than do the whole family situation, which would have been my preference, I decided to really focus on this generation of teens, 13 and up, the gen generation Zers, um, and look at all the research and what their needs are. So, that, you know, 27% of these kids have, um, you know, mental health um, challenges. Um, <laughs> only 18% of these kids are gonna get a job in high school and they're all really headed to a, you know, or most of them are headed to college and they don't have very much imagination about other possibilities, um, right? And then you look at all the, all the skills, um, the durable skills or the soft skills they're gonna need to be really successful in, you know, in the next 50 years. Um, and, and all of them require them being, you know, agile thinkers, adaptable, uh, critical thinkers. Um, they have to be able to collaborate in teams and all those sort of things. So, you know, how can we get them super motivated to go out into the world and collaborate in these teams? Right? So I'm thinking you need kind of like a launch pad for that. So um, after, you know, quite a lot of exploration, and I know I did some with Michael as well. <laughs> um, I did choose the Gather Town platform uh, mm -hmm. because um, it's a pretty, it, out of all the platforms, it, it seemed to be the easiest platform that I thought teens could actually create on. And like, if, if teens got on there, got used to the platform, which is actually fairly similar to Discord, something that, that they're very familiar with, yeah. um, but rather than being online chat, you can actually walk around on the platform. So I guess it's like a, a cross between real, I think it's a real player one and uh, like Animal Crossing where you can walk around this whole world and you can go inside like museums and you can go to the movies and you can do all these different things. And Kathy, let me just pause you because I'm not sure if you introduced me to Gather Town, but mm -hmm. I've been using it. And I gotta tell you that young people, old people, everybody, finds it really fun. And mm -hmm. the first time you use it, you're like, I don't ever want to do a Zoom again because I have this opportunity to interact organically with people. And so so that's the platform that you're going to invite people to connect in, huh? Right. Yes. So I was trying and what I'm trying to do is mimic real life, right? I don't yeah. want it to be too complicated. I don't want it to be all really 3D, uh, immersive, very high intense intensive computer usage, you know, like you have to download something to do it. Like this all happens in a browser. Uh, and you can um, you can do so many different things in that. But what I'm really trying to do is mimic just the very, very basic um, human relationships that people have. Like you'll be walking down a street and you bump into someone and you have a little conversation, right? Like right. I am trying to have a hundred conversations a day, small conversations all over the map. Yeah. So I'm setting it up so that, you know, you have little private spaces all over the place. Um, and really fun ways that you can connect. So, you know, we'd have a fitness center, for example, and outside the fitness center, there are little yoga mats for a small group of people doing yoga. So they could be doing yoga <laughs> together and people could be walking past on the street. Um, so it doesn't feel like you're in a Zoom. Yeah, I, I, think, I think having not done it before and then when I finally did it, I started to realize the power of it. And so for those that are listening, um, just kind of trust me on this one. When, when you are in an environment like she's describing, it does feel like you really are moving through the environment and interacting with people organically and, you know, by chance. And these are people who could, right, be, they could be all over the world, right, Kath? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, I'm mim mimicking what would happen in a, like a creative company and where they set things up so people actually meet on the stairwell. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and doing all that... Uh, so I guess social engineering, <laughs> like uh, strategically placed water coolers and, and, and those sort of things. Um, but, you know, the, the most important or the most, I guess the most fun part of doing this whole thing was, you know, in Montessori philosophy, um, 
she, want, she wanted to give the adolescents the world, sort of an, the understanding of, of the whole world and how everything works in the world. And when I was trying to do that in the physical space, and I was trying to, when I first started designing workspace, I was thinking we can do it right in the center of a town and I can use all these different areas of the town to try and give them the world. Um, but you are very, very limited by how much space you can afford and how much you can afford to decorate and all these different elements. Sure. But in a virtual space, I was able to, you know, I use um, patterns that you find in the universe as a, a basis for, um, for the layout of this map. It looks like a big university campus. And we have a giant center in the, in the center, which is our marketplace of ideas. And then we have 10 smaller centers that are all in a, a sacred pattern of the universe located around the edge of it. So we have the laws of the universe um, on one side, for example, and, and there it's, it actually is a, it's a space age sort of themed center. Uh, and we're doing you know, science and math, but really looking at patterns um, and how math is used creatively and um, mm -hmm. at buildings where you can um, just have a regular math classroom, but we also have a planetarium. Uh, you could go onto the roof. We have a, a cafeteria on the, on the roof of the big sky building. We have the Space Needle. We have the Millennial Falcon. Um, and you can go inside there and do a, you know, a tutorial. That's where uh, I'm going to be. We have all these little pathways everywhere, everywhere. And then we have portals. So you can portal all over the place to different spaces. Um, so it was really, you know, we worked with a concept artist who was just amazing at trans translating our imagination hmm. into a concept which we can actually make. Um, and it's just, it's, it's an amazing thing, thing to see an idea that sort of has been swimming around in your head actually being manifested. And I want the children to get a taste of what that is like. And this is a platform for them to be able to actually make real what is happening in their imaginations, which is something we, we tend to lose during high school because we're deadened by all the busy work. So Cass, one of, I think one of your greatest achievements at Workspace was a gorgeous space, but one of your greatest achievements was intentional culture and community. Um, are you going to, and if so, how are you going to create intentional culture and community? Oh, this is a good question. Oh, well, um, so I guess my heart is in regenerative education um, and helping everybody who's in our orbit upskill and sort of start identifying what their role is in the world um, and working on that and having, um, having uh, Workspace Sky as a, ca a canvas for them to really fully and authentically practice expressing themselves in that role. Um, and what I mean, <laughs> I'm going to get to the answering your question in a second. Um, <laughs> um, so what I mean by that is um, we, are, we are fulfilled and happiest, I think, that when, when we are doing things um, that we care about, that we're good at, that we enjoy doing, where we are fully doing the thing that we're meant to be doing in this world, which, you know, for me, it's getting people unstuck. Um, for other people, it's it's networking. For other people, it's you know caring or caregiving. There are a lot of different roles that we have, and pretty much no matter when you're doing that thing, you are pretty happy, and you'd be doing that thing in all the different jobs that you would be doing in your life, right? Uh, and when kids and people can identify that thing, then that's really a key to their to their happiness and fulfillment in life. And this is a a sandbox for them going out and experimenting and finding that thing, working out what that thing is. Um, now, and to do that, we also have a side-by-side -side, um, advisory wayfinding coaching system that um, we've been, uh, well, we've implemented. So every child would be um, a group, in a group of 10 to 15 um, other teenagers, and we have two staff members per group. And they would meet somewhere on the map and they would be exploring different, um, they'd be doing different activities that involve a lot of conversations mm -hmm. around a theme. And we are starting our first theme for the first season as we work in seasons. So our season is three months or about 10 weeks. 
Um, it translates into 10 weeks. And, and we're doing it um, using the book Belong. Uh, for, that's the theme for the first season. So with teenagers, um, they are always trying to find their place. Uh, Montessori calls it the time of the birth of their social being, where they're out there experimenting with who they are and, and trying to find themselves. Um, and we think that, you know, when we're starting a new, new space, we're hoping to have um, between 100 and 200 teens. We want them to get to know each other. So the advisories and, and meeting at the same time every week is going to bring all these teens together at the same place um, at the same time, and they're going to be exploring belonging. Um, and that is really um, thinking about who they are and who they want to be when they go out there into the world and defining the kinds of friends that they're looking for. And then we do activities like speed friending to help them find those. Um, Would you call it speed friending? Speed friending, yes. Like speed <laughs> we did dating? It. Yeah, it's like speed dating. Yeah, we do have the lines of chairs. We, can, we set up lines of chairs. We're doing it in the marketplace of ideas. Love that, and yeah. I'll have um, you know, a certain amount of time and they move along the chairs so they get to meet everybody. Um, so we, we have social events like that. But we also have um, over um, 100 hours of free programming that's included in the membership. Um, and we do those activities at the same time every day to bring everyone to the space at the same time every day so that they'll be able to find each other because it's very easy to spread out. There's so much, there's so much to explore on the map that we are bringing people in. Um, communities have to breathe in and they breathe out. <laughs> um, and I learned a lot from, from managing workspace and, uh, you know, and working with teens. And I, I did see at workspace, uh, we just didn't have enough people on the ground to do all the things that they needed. We didn't do advisories. And I sorely wanted to do a lot more things that I had the, um, the bandwidth um, and resources to do at the time. But I feel in this space, we can add 10 times the value and it's about a tenth of the cost. So I feel it's a disruptive, it's a, you know, it's, it's a great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's part of what I'm, you know, I'm going to play the role of a stupid parent, which I, I play that role really, really well, Kath. I think you probably know that already. And so as the stupid parent, what I would ask is, are things like, mm -hmm. all right, well, um, uh, like, let's go with the basics. Like, why should I consider workspace sky uh, mm -hmm. over homeschooling or unschooling or even the traditional school I'm, my kid might be in? Right. Well, you know, it's really a supplement. It's a co-working space. It's not actually a school. Okay. It is a campus, like a uni if you imagine a university campus and you cross it with Disneyland kind of sort of something. <laughs> it's a destination, right? It's somewhere where your child can go to find friends. Right. And we have this growth mindset um, sort of infused into, into everything that we do, into every activity. You know, like we have guest speakers come in, thought leaders every week, and they're talking on, on different topics. So they get a, a range of exposure to different ideas about the same topic. So you're not just getting the one line of thought. You're getting a lot of different ways of, of approaching an idea. Um, and then you've got other kids that you can talk about it because they're all going to the same meeting. So you've got I these... See. Topics of conversation. Um, we do wellness classes. Um, we do yoga. We do meditation. We have a wellness center. Um, we have nature scapes, so they can you can go on a little mountain trail, um, or you can go by the lake, and that little you just portal into them. So you can be there's sort of a balance between in technology and then being in nature as much as we can make it like that. But we have the sounds of nature, like the ocean sounds and you go to the fire pit and you hear the fire pit going and um all right so so again i'm hearing that it, it's not a replacement for a school right oh, well you can you can do you it can be like there are so many different ways of getting an education i mean if you're unschooling that might be a place where you get all your social needs met you might do a couple of classes there like uh, financial literacy if you want your child to to learn how to manage their personal finances oh wow yeah classes yeah. um you know i've picked some of the greatest stuff that we did at workspace and i've just infused it and yeah. we have we have um well as i said we are uh, going to be partnering with k20 um they are making a huge network of educators so we're going to have 
amazing, um, innovative and, em and emergent experiences that can happen, you know, in this uh, unconventional, <laughs> unconventional space. Um, so I'm very excited about the possibilities. So, I mean, you can definitely have those classes, but there's nothing stopping you doing accredited uh, dual enrollment university classes at, you know, ASU or, you know, Florida Virtual or wherever you want to do those classes or doing Michael's class, um, micro school. Yeah. Yeah. So again, as a parent, oh, sorry, Michael, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, um, I, I'm going to persist on my earlier question and go a little bit more deeply. I, I think the number one value, educational content is ubiquitous and free all over the internet. Anybody yep. can get an education for free anywhere. So I think the curation of community is one of the principal value adds I see in you potentially having. So I don't know, what is your admissions process? What are the boundaries of behavior? And when and how would you kick somebody out of the community? Um, well, good questions. Um, so we have a code of conduct. You know, we also have advisories and in, in the advisories that they're really learning how, how we are or, you know, how to be in the world. Um, and, you know, we've trained our staff for, you know, we have four psychologists actually who are, um, who are shepherding um, our, you know, our weekly group meetings. Um, we also have... Uh, one-to-one -one wayfinding that's um, that's also available if anyone wants to get a season pass of wayfinding. Um, but uh, admissions process is you sign up and um, and that's with $350 a season and you try it and you see if it's a good fit for you. Um, and we, you come to the advisories and we are, you know, reaching out and finding, um, finding out exactly what the, the student is wanting to do at workspace and what their passions are. And we know all the other kids who are gonna be in the space. So we are um, sort of helping them connect. Um, we do, uh, a, a, we have a full day of onboarding for them and we go through online safety, our code of conduct, um, you know, what we're trying to do at workspace sky and what to do if anything happens that, you know, where they feel uncomfortable. And we do have our um, supportive um, psychologists there to sort of navigate these issues. Um, you know, we, we see our role in the advisories as all of our staff members are going to be in our advisories with our teens um, as a chance to get to know what the teens need and want and how we're doing. And we can adjust um, what we're doing to fit the needs of the community. Um, we do have a lot of full community events. As I said, we, we meet twice a day as a full community. It's optional, but we do have offerings twice a day for them. So there will be a lot of getting together. And then when they say things like, um, you know, we want to set up a, you know, a, a, govern a governance system, then we work out how to do that as a group, or we want this kind of club, or we want that. Um, the, the, I would say the community philosophy that we had at Workspaces in Education on the Ground is what I'm really trying to recreate here in the, in the sky as best as possible. Um, and I would say it's heavily based on Montessori philosophy and regenerative education. Yeah, I get that. Just before letting that go, I, I would encourage you to emphasize that more. I mean, you're very enthusiastic about the cool stuff out there. In a way, mm -hmm. and it sounds awful, but in a way I'm sort of blase about the cool stuff out there. I get cool mm -hmm. stuff, I'm drowning in cool stuff. But I think the healthy, positive community, I think that's a really unique and unusual Thing. And I think the more parents realize how catastrophically dangerous both regular schools and the open internet are, um, mm -hmm. I think the more they'll value highly mm -hmm. curated communities, they look at the needs of the child, and I love the advisory and the counselors and all that. I think that's a much bigger part of your value proposition than perhaps you realize. So it's my little lecture. I'll let Matt go for it. <laughs> no, I no, think it's, it's... It's true. We're learning. Like, you know, the whole time on this journey, this workspace journey. For me, it's just been one giant learning curve. Um, I know that I'm gonna do a much better job than I did with the teens that we had at Workspace. And it was a great location. Um, and it even made me think that it's not, the space isn't that important. Hmm. So it's not as important. You I mean, you can have a great community in a really, you know, in a barn, you, you don't need, you don't need a fancy building. Right, but I, I also think that you can have a great community in an online space, but you know, people need to experiment more. And this is what we should be doing rather than all running to in-person, 
because we're going to come up with the same limitations as we had, um, as I had at Workspace. So, uh, I don't know. Well, picking up a little bit from Mike's point, Michael's point is that, um, you know, what I'm hearing from it is the rare opportunity for, and we talk about this in the educational world about learning being fun, but mm -hmm. school, the social part of school might be fun for some, but learning is not fun. But what you're describing is a place where uh, organic learning happens and groups of kids can be learning together around a variety of topics that don't get covered in class but for which we know that kids are interested in. I mean, personal finance is one of those things that you ask any kid about money and they're curious about it. And yet we don't ever talk about it. Here could be an environment where a number of kids start to experiment, maybe start a business or at least kick around ideas around that sort of thing. And that, that's kind of what I'm hearing that this is just a different, uh, well, space, <laughs> workspace to uh, to learn in a way that's much more engaging than anything that can happen kind of in a typical classroom. Yeah, well, I mean, it's different. I think that people should try it and, and see. Yeah. I mean, we've all experienced Zoom calls and we just get sick of it, right? Like, I, I feel like we need to move more. And at least if you have to be virtual <laughs> and, you know, a lot of people have to be virtual. They're in hospital or, you know, they're very remote or they're traveling a lot, right? Um, and they might want a, the consistency of friend group and they want to be able to beam in from anywhere. Um, yeah. and, and we can bring that. I, I found that with parents. When you talk to homeschooling parents, you know, what they find it important is to find other families who are fairly like-minded that they can grow up with or their children can grow up with so they have that consistency of friend group. And there are a lot of kids too that, you know, when you talk to, and you probably know a bunch of them, uh, a bunch of adults who will say when you talk to them, oh, we moved around all the time. We were, an, I was an army brat. I, you know, I never really had deep friends. Um, and I feel like that the friends that they, they can make in, a, in an environment like Workspace um, could be really sustaining friends for, you know, over a long time. Um, and I, I know that from my son who's had fantastic friends um, just through, you know, some of the games that he's played and um, ha having that consistency on, you know, on the East Coast, West Coast, um, he's made some really great friends and they've been traveling to meet each other. Yeah. Uh, so I know that people can form really deep bond, you know, uh, relationships in an online environment. Uh, we just need to master the art in, in a, not a salesy way. Like I feel like computer games are about getting people are addicted, <laughs> right? And, you know, to to the activity, but, you know, there's no, you know, I'm not out there to make money. I'm, I'm trying to make environments that enhance the human experience. And I want these kids to be coming back to this space because that's where the opportunity is going to be because we're constantly bringing the opportunity to them. And it's a bridge to going out in the real world and doing, you know, their passions, their passions either, with, you know, with other people in a physical space, in another online space. I mean, you know, as a homeschooler, you you need you need these opportunities. You want your kid to find these opportunities. This is a safe place to go to find these opportunities. So I got a couple of other things in terms of your value proposition. One is um, so the advisory is great, psychologists are great. Do you have the equivalent of kind of college counselors and or do you have sort of mentors on either careers or specialized pathways? Yeah, so we, we're working with Dr. Chris Unger at Northeastern, um, and he's setting up our whole mentoring track. So he has his own building, actually. He's got his own backyard and fire pit. And, uh, you know, there are going to be times when the, the teens can go over there at certain times and go and chat with him and, um, and him and Jim um, McHugh as well. Um, and we are, we are partnering with a bunch of different people to bring, to bring awesome opportunities for the teens. Um, for example, um, gosh, uh, on Saturday, I was talking to Godwin Morris, who she's uh, running a, a big maker space conference in New York City. She's uh, wildly connected in the maker um, with Make Magazine and the maker community. And she wants to come in and um, come into our innovation center because we have an innovation discovery center and, in, you know, basically have a maker fair in, in there. 
and um, you know connect us with Adafruit and different companies who are doing really fun makery um, you know competitions and different things for teens and um, I, I just imagine if in every center we had a similar person we have we have a bunch of them already but we don't have them for every center um, but in our storytelling storytelling center I expect to have a bunch of different authors come in and my daughter's going to be in there <laughs> she's just publishing her third book um, but she really loves talking to young authors and so she's going to be coming in and help and helping them and we're making a building called the writer's block uh, like a little co-working space for authors so we're hoping kids would you know they would sort of park in, in the space that they that they really feel comfortable in and um, and also, uh, we have a lot of fun things for them to do in there, like they can design their own dorms. Um, we have lockers, like every homeschooling kid I know wants a locker because they don't get one. So <laughs> we've, we've got these banks of lockers and they have a little um, metal plate they can put, I mean, they design their little logo, they put it on their locker and it's password protected. So you can just go inside your locker and no one else can come in unless you've got a, they've got the password. So um, also, Gathertown is allowing uh, or is in, in the process of helping uh, kids have pets. So you can, you can, you'll be able to have a little pet with you as you go around Gathertown, which I think will be really fun. All right, Kath, I got I to gotta pause you because, again, I'm, I want to keep playing a little bit of a provocative role. I mean, I love, you know, I hope you know I love what you're doing. I think this is exactly the kind of disruption that education needs, but I want to keep speaking to and, and having a, being a voice a little bit for parents that might think this is crazy talk, right? The idea that kids can learn and build relationships online. And so um, I, want it, I want you to talk a bit more about what you have seen in maybe in your work or in other work. You mentioned, um, you know, kids that learn on through gaming. How mm -hmm. is learning and, and relationship different online but also how is it becoming much more normal? Well, you know, I haven't met you in person, Matt. That's a <laughs> great point. <laughs> great point. <laughs> you know, uh, but, you know, and some of my best friends I haven't, I haven't actually met at this point. It's so right. interesting. My brother met his wife at match.com. Like, like, we actually do have some good times online, right? We, we are actually making connections and then you build that over time and you build that over consistency and always coming back, right? So what I am trying to do is create uh, an environment where everybody wants to come back, right? We, we're doing like the Halloween party. We're doing a big scavenger hunt on Thanksgiving. Um, you know, it, it, it's just, it's a, a fun place, but it's also a place for parents. We've got a parent accessory site hmm. where we help parents find, um, you know, the, the, well, we teach, basically we teach them what homeschoolers, you know, seasoned homeschoolers do, which is they like crowdsource the answer, answer to all their curriculum um, right. Right. question. Um, they find others who have similar children in similar situations and, you know, similar mindsets and, and they, they ask their questions and they get very detailed responses. Um, and so, you know that much better way of getting your answers. Sorry. So again, I love your enthusiasm, Kath. And mm -hmm. the reason I'm kind of pushing back is because I want something like this to win. Again, uh, for me, I, I sit in this world where I believe most conventional education, especially secondary education, is fraudulent and abusive. And I mean that dead seriously. It's fraudulent because most kids learn almost nothing. They pretend to learn. Teachers pretend to teach, not for the top 20, 30, 40, maybe 50%. Maybe 50% of kids are getting an education optimistically. But at least 50% of the kids are not getting anything. Meanwhile, on the abusive side, severe, severe social, emotional, psychological damage that is lifelong lasting. And meanwhile, and everything, everybody says, educational equity, we need to spend more. Spend more on this system? Oh my God. Meanwhile, you are providing something almost for free. I mean, the, think of the parents who can afford what you're offering. Almost everybody in the United States, you know, even some parents below the poverty line could afford what you're offering. And insofar as you're emphasizing the fun part, yes, teenage engagement is huge, but I also want to help people go off the, oh, my kid is, you know, depressed, anxious, suicidal, but at least they're learning. No, 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 they're not even learning. 
And so I want to flip it around. So one piece I would encourage is Chris Unger. Oh my God, I would market the hell out of Chris Unger's participation. Harvard professor, Chris Unger, blah, 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 blah. Shameless self-promotion. And by self-promotion, it means shameless promotion of everything you can brag about. Think, I want you to look at, you know, the sleaziest used car salesman at night. I'm playing with this a little bit. <laughs> you, know? you, know, you know, I look, you know, it's very humbling when you're out there innovating, right? And it's a lot, it's a lot of work. But, you know, I feel like when you go to like, a, you know, the Christensen Institute or you, all, the, all these big innovative think tanks, they're all writing about, you know, we need to build social capital. Uh, we need, uh, you know, these kids to be out there doing real world experiences, all these sort of things, right? Um, and, you know, I built workspace for that. I built it on the ground. Right. The hardest thing was getting all the connections and getting that person I wanted them to connect to in in the same space at the same time. Um, and to be able to serve all of those different children at, at once because everybody's on individualized pathways. But it is so much easier when you when you can do that in an online space, uh, because, you know, if someone's really into. Uh, or interested in something, you can you call a professor and they don't have to drive out to do the in-person course. They could just, you know, maybe get on, you know, get on a Zoom call for even half an hour to, to do those sort of things. Much so easier. Would, so again, you're talking about all the wonderful things. Your nature is to talk about the wonderful, wonderful things. I'm going to propose a building in your community and I would name it the regular school is fraudulent and abusive building. You would have something slightly nicer, but not a lot nicer, I hope. I want the kids to gather in your community. No, because part of it is, yeah, um, you know, these fancy places, fancy people say, you know, school is a problem, but parents and students, Matt can speak to this, have this severe fear. You know, they, they've got this Stockholm syndrome. We were abused. We got to keep abusing our kids. Oh my God. You know, and, and so I think that, you know, if you want to win, I, so you could have this and a year from now, it's got 200 kids, 300 kids. No, no, no. I want a year from now to have 20,000 kids, two years from now, 50,000 kids, yada, yada, yada. And, and how do you do that? I think, I think you know, I, I, at this point in my life, I'm like, no more, no more Mr. Nice Guy. Those, those people are harming too many kids' lives. I want people to go in there, right, to come visit, come see, come tour and be like, oh, my God, like this could be the answer and I could do it. And right? I want to inspire people to make them. I want to give them an example of what really good looks like and how you can use collaborators and networks and, uh, you know, how you can create, a, you know, create and train a staff to implement this for a, like a fraction, like yes. less than a tenth of what it takes to do in a in you know a real world building and you can do it well right and at the same time you're giving them freedom because you're not requiring people to drive to a location every day for five days a week right you're not requiring everybody to to use the the school the school schedule or you know you don't have the regulations that require you know all of this structure and you but, can but they don't have math class. You're not forcing them to take algebra. What's wrong with you, Kath? You need to force these kids to take algebra. You want to inspire them to work out what they really want to learn and, and help them create those lily pad pathways to go where they want to go. 99% of the parents. When you say you want to inspire them, gone. I'm going to, I'm going to pop back off. I'll let Matt take it over. <laughs> well, hey, you know, Michael's, Michael's trying to help, and I, I, I'm, I'm with him. I mean, I, 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 I want this to become you know, not a couple hundred, but hundreds of thousands of people, of, of young people online. You know, I, again, I, and I'm, keep, I, I'm trying to find out, like, how do, we, how do we help parents take the plunge to explore this? Michael's talking about all the negative. Yeah, this is what that. I would say, Matt. Yeah. Whatever you're doing now and supplement with this. Yeah, yeah. Right, because it's 350 a season. It's not expensive. Right. Yeah. And you can discover and see if it has value. Right. I basically, from my experience, 15 years of homeschooling, I've taken everything that was missing that I wanted my teens to have in, in homeschooling and I've added it. Right. Yeah. And then I've taken all the negatives of what I think school has, <laughs> including the environment. Right. Um, and the rigidity and, you know, 
you know, my, your kid can't take this now because they haven't done this class before and all these different things. I've taken that out. Yep. And I've, so I've got the best of both worlds molded into a, into a place. You can, you can get a fantastic education if you want to do a traditional education, right, by just going to somewhere like um, ASU Digital Prep um, and you can do six classes with a success coach um, and they'll be accredited, probably dual, in, you know, you can do dual enrollment. You can get a great education for under $3,000. You know, if you want that as well. So you can have the social, right? You can have the social calendar. You can have the, the Dr. Anga mentoring. You can, you have your advisory. You've got a peer group, right? You have exposure to all these different ideas, right? They can have their own, like, it's almost like a college experience in high school. It's like that, that, that sort of, that preparation for college, like this is what it's going to be like at college where you have that freedom. Um, anxiety so, support. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so we're, yeah, so much. So one of the things I don't, maybe you're already doing this, but uh, okay, so there are lots of not absolutely horrible low cost online accredited curricula. And mm -hmm. when you say not absolutely horrible, I think it's still bullshit, but it's at least not a lot of effort, you know, not too harmful, relatively undamaging bullshit. And so what I am hearing you saying is that you create this cool space. Maybe you could advise parents, because again, I think you're going to do a great job of providing a social community for existing unschoolers. Insofar mm -hmm. as existing unschoolers who are so scattered, they're impossible. Talk about herding cats. You might be able to gather a few of the unschoolers for this great social environment. Hallelujah. Again, okay. but. I, I'm concerned about all those people. And so some of it is you, and you are, you are one of the most informed people I've ever known on all the options out there. And so maybe part of this is, hey, if you want, um, you know, just to get the accredited thing out there and I'll let you do the nice version of $3,000 ASU. Okay, great. And this is the experience. Um, great. But I, I think, I feel as if you have an obligation to inform people that there are complete soup to nuts alternatives. And this is a soup to nut alternative. Because just going back to the, oh, it's fun and it's great. I saw research showing teenagers today are spending eight to nine hours online in social media, gaming, and almost certainly porn. So, you know, you've got, you know, you, are kids gonna do this for fun after a full day of school? No, they hate school. And once they're out of school, they're on social media, gaming, and porn. And so are they going to come to your thing? Maybe not if they're that sick of life because it's killed them. I'm, you know, again, I'm so passionate about this. But um, yeah, if you could help parents understand, no, you can get a respected accredited diploma plus this cool experiences and community, then maybe you can, you know, I'm, I'm about freeing the prisoners. So yes, the unschooling community, let's free mm -hmm. more prisoners. No, I mean, you can totally get an education from anywhere. Um, I was just thinking, that I want un unschoolers to feel just as comfortable as someone doing a traditional route and anyone in between. And if you don't want to do any of the traditional classes, um, at which you don't have to, uh, you know, you can do it in a, in a less formal way as well with no grades and, and have a mastery and, you know, create a mastery based transcript. We support our parents. We teach them how to take the records and everything that they're going to need, you know, uh, to do the transcripting at the end. And we also have, you know, obviously, um, we have college counselors that we we can offer them. It's not included in the um, in the three fifty um, fee, but we we definitely have a lot of homeschoolers who've. Sorry, you're going to say something. I'm all about marketing. So now, from what you're saying, I'm thinking your tagline is the greatest online unschooling community in the world. Again, shameless self promotion. Um, the greatest online unschooling community in the world. And let's let people gather. So if that's, I get that, that's your thing. There are unschoolers, they're all over the place. They're lonely, they're isolated. You are providing the greatest. Yeah, but, you know, I, in the world. I think you can still like, you know, children change. And sometimes you know, like my, my daughter went to university in her last year of high school. And, uh, you know, we've done accredited dual enrollment classes for my son as he went through high school. So, um, I think any homeschooler or any anybody who's not who anyone who's doing online learning would benefit from this kind of environment. I think it really is for everybody. I mean, even in school. I mean, when my daughter was in Montessori school, she had a hard time finding friends. 
So I think, you know, high school can actually be a really lonely place. So the greatest, again, I want to get the greatest in there. The greatest online safe learning social community for teens in the world. I don't know. We, we, we won't figure it now, but. Um, it is. It's all of that. Like, I am so proud of what we've created. And, you know, I, I now have 18 people who are working like pretty much around the clock to make this the best possible example of what this can be. And I hope that I can inspire the world to create a metaverse of these kinds of spaces so that children will have a real choice, right? So in a low cost version where they're getting that opportunity and everyone has access to that opportunity. Um, and I don't want anyone to be a stuck taking this full circle in a situation that is harming them. And that is what the situation is right now in the country. And it is the best time in the country to innovate. So I, you know, we train people like we're doing, um, we have three hour workshops. In fact, we have one on Thursday, <laughs> a three hour workshop and how to create your own ideal learning space in Gathertown. Um, and I'm doing that monthly now. So anybody who wants to start their own learning space, you can start really small, have your own little homeschool uh, for your neighborhood kids or for your own kids. Um, and then just, you can grow it and you can teach them how to grow it, right? Like we can make this incredible web metaverse of education. Um, so, you know, we, we aren't beholden to the school for socialization because that's the number one reason why people aren't in school is they think, there are no kids outside of school, but uh, we're going to prove them different with this kind of learning landscape. And I'm excited to share it with the world. We have, we have 35 days to launch. <laughs> so if you're interested in finding out more, um, I'm going to be adding links, but you can always email me, kath at 100roads.org, which is our research and development company. Um, yeah, and we'll have that in the show notes as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to just reach out and say hi. I love talking to people about education. And um... so, Kathleen. So again, I I want to ask the question: Are, are you are you wanting to talk to parents, or you talk wanting to talk to kids? I talk to everybody. Yeah. And then, um, in terms of well, you're going to have to go through the parents because there's going to be some financial transaction that's going to take place. And so, um, give me your best mm -hmm. elevator pitch. And then maybe Michael and I will tweak it a little bit, but give me your best elevator pitch to a parent who is in a public tra traditional school uh, whose child is just not happy. What's your best pitch to, for them to try uh, 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 Workspace Sky? Um, if you need us to help you, we can put something. Yeah, I think you need to make, make me a pitch because I, you know, I just, when, when I hear you say that, my heart just goes straight out to them because that's exactly where I was right. with my son, right? And I was looking for a place where he could have his best life, right? And that he, he could uh, engage as fully as he was able to at that moment and then develop his confidence and then competence and then really understand what resonated within him. And I, I feel like I've created this landscape for that. You know, if they're always hanging out in storytelling or at Laws of the Universe or in the story of humans or in the innovation or design, like wherever they're hanging out or sustainability, we're going to know. Uh, they're going to learn. <laughs> they're going to know thyself, right? Which is the whole idea of what we're doing here is, is we're trying to help them find a direction and then upskill in what they love to do and what they care about. Um, and then, you know, you can always get the academics. Yeah, acad academics you know, the actual traditional academic classes are the easiest piece of this puzzle. Yeah. Um, I have to get Michael to come in. I've got, I've designed two spaces for you, Michael, already on the, on the campus. One's called St. John's Nook, and it's a little Socratic uh, area in the forest for discussions. Um, and I have another one in the marketplace of ideas. So I'm, I'm hoping to get you there and, and maybe you could have a class or two with your, with your kids inside the, um, inside the map. So yes, no, I did not help me with the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll help offline a little bit. What I just heard though, I heard you say, you know, parents, here's an opportunity for your child to find their best life, to find their confidence and to find what inspires them in a community of learners. I heard something like that. And yeah. I think most parents that I talked to, they are looking for hope 
And what you're offering is exactly that. It's hope that their child can actually find a place where they're inspired to learn and they actually love to learn rather than what we know right. happens to probably 60% of kids. They just, to yeah. they toil through school. So I'm hearing, I'm hearing it in there and I just want to help make sure that uh, the parents uh, that might be listening hear this as well. They can stay in school. You don't have to, you don't have to, you can stay in school and try it while they're at school. And if it's the right fit, jump over, right? You just put your toe in, right? So you don't, you don't have to make a big, big change there. If it doesn't work, you just stop. If it's the best thing you've ever experienced and your child's very happy, you like sign up for the full year. And then in the summertime, we're gonna be doing really wonderful in-person sort of learning experiences, hopefully at the ranch. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, different places like that where the kids can actually get to meet each other in person. So um, the reason I'm all marketing all the time is I was born, you know, and as an American believing a better, you know, build a better mousetrap, there'll be a path to your door in education that has not been the case. So uh, we have to figure out how to get, have them beat the mousetrap to your door. So I know this organization that produces videos interviewing amazing people called When School's Not Working. And I would encourage you to spread some of those stories so that as people see these stories of amazing people who've had amazing lives without regular schooling, you can help convert not just the homeschooled, unschooled, and alt schooled, but help convert uh, those who are suffering in pain by, uh, yeah, knowing the pathway. So again, offline, help, happy to help. I, I'm, I'm glad you used the word best. You know, I use greatest, you use best. Okay, Kath is going there. Um, so yeah, let's help Kath make the best place for teens to engage in a healthy, positive learning environment. All right. Okay, we've got two and a half minutes left. Um, Kath, let me go ahead and throw up uh, one of these questions that we ask all of our hosts or our guests, I should say. Um, and so I'll throw it to you. I think you know what's coming. Um, I if <laughs> If you could change, make one change, change one thing with your magic wand, change one thing about the traditional school, what would you want to see happen? I think I would get rid of standardized testing just to free the teacher, teachers up to be able to teach what, you know, how they, they want to teach. Yeah. As a teacher myself, that's what I, I would miss the most. Yeah. What about you, Michael? What one thing would I remove, or am I asking Kath a question? Oh uh, well, you, either one. Um, so, what are your greatest dreams for this current project? I, I want you to um, fantasize wildly. If, if if this was the most glorious success ten years from now, what does it look like? Hmm. You know, in in my mind, um, I see really powerful collaborations with mentoring networks and nonprofits um, with you know, people who are really doing great stuff, entrepreneurship, stuff that will really get our kids out from, um, that will really bring opportunities to everyone. I, I guess opportunity um, and having like, a, I call it the marketplace of ideas in the center of our map, but a way that we can fully and authentically express ourselves in some way. Um, and we can have this beautiful diverse map and not, and you know, basically turn this whole conformity of opinion and of um, of what we have to learn upside down so we can create a really beautiful, diverse um, uh, weave of, of humans. Yeah. I'd love to see that. Well, Kath, my, my prayer is that, um, you know, five, 10 years from now, actually less than that, that this thing is blowing up and that, that it, it really is the place that people think of first when they want their kids to learn and to be inspired uh, and to love and fall in love with learning again. I think that's the key element that I'm hearing from everything I've talked to you about and everything I've learned about Workspace Sky. So I'm looking forward to that. Can you tell people again how to get a hold of you and where to find more information? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can go to Workspace Sky, that's one word, dot org. Um, right now we just uh, launched our website. Um, and you can meet our coaches and see all the things that we offer there. And there are links to sign up if you're interested. Um, if you'd like to make your own um, co-learning community like uh, Workspace Sky, I would love to give you all the tips and, and everything that I 
uh, I, I learned in order to do this. Um, and I am, a, you know, I'm, I'm not a digital designer to do this. You can do it. Everyone can do it. Yeah. Right? You just have to have confidence in yourself. And I will spend three hours with you trying to get you where um, you can build your own ideal learning space. And uh, we do that through 100 Roads, our research and development company, um, our nonprofit. And you can always email me, kath at 100roads.org. And there's actually a, a link if you want to go to that workshop on Thursday. There's actually a link on our website at workspacesky.org. It says, do you want to make one of these? <laughs> and you can just join the free webinar and you'll be in. So um, don't be shy. Great. Michael, close us out, please. All right. Uh, well, first, it's great to be back with you too. I feel like I've been missing my uh, family for a while. So good to see you both and wonderful to have you as guest, Kath. Uh, I think we need to beat up on Matt again soon. So it's just about that time. Um, mm -hmm. And with that, uh, this is Michael Strong uh, with When School's Not Working, where we're out to help you understand that there are wonderful alternative paths for your children. Let no child ever be unhappy due to schooling. Thank you. Bye, everybody. See ya. Bye.